Uh, the way to set up your um, uh, iOS device and your computer is to, um, well, you can read all this, read all about this in the README file. But um, in order to get this IP address here, um, you need to um, go onto your TouchOSC application, double click or single click on the I button in the corner. Come on, focus. Cool. Um, click on the connection. So the host name. Actually, we'll get to that in a sec. But this this local IP address um, goes from here to there. Yeah, that is the right number. Come on, focus. Um, the top number though. Uh, I've got instructions in the README file how to do it for a PC. But on a Mac, you go yeah, to System Preferences. Ooh, try not to shake the camera so much. Um, network. And then um, if you click on the Wi Fi thing, you've got it right here 169.254.77.155, and that is the correct one there. So that confirms that it's all working. Oh, and also um, make sure that you have these ports the same. So the send one will be the port incoming one, which is 8001, and the receive one would be the outgoing one on this. Okay, so here we have four pages. This is the first page, second page, third page, and eventually if it wants to go, they get fourth page. Okay, so the first page is, as you might be able to see, is a way to, um, it's basically a mixer of input of input devices. So the, the, the top four buttons here, which I can tap, um, are arming each track of um, like the inputs on your sound card so and this is input 1, 2, 3, 4 and down here we have the gain so if we touch at the very top it will be the gain set to the very highest then down here it will be completely off um, the LEDs that come on, the little dot that comes up is actually reacting to me talking into this microphone so if I talk uh, a bit louder there you go it's the red which means it's peaking a bit. But so if I just bring that down around there, maybe? No behind maybe. Yes, cool. So now I'm gonna get my trusty Glockenspiel and um I'm turn on record looping. Click record. Oh, <laughs> it's only a one second long buffer, so um, I need to turn off the recording really quickly. So, there we go. And uh, we've actually got it on the screen here, just in case we can't see it. But, not that we need that actually, because on the third screen we have a waveform select, which may or may not work. Okay, so the second page, we have um, the uh, envelope settings, Attack, reduce coil run like this. Decay, sustain, and release. Um, we've got the forward and reverse buttons here. Um, you've got to be quite careful to click them properly. I should have really put them over here somewhere uh, instead of the mixer settings. Uh, we've got a panic button for when um, when a note sticks on too long for whatever reason. Um, and we've got uh, mixer settings that don't actually work. Because I haven't gone around to actually making a, making the plugins or anything for it, um, so they're just for show and for concept. But the master works. The master volume should work. Um, okay, this is the waveform display. Um, there you go. It's just updated a little bit. So this is not the most accurate way to show a waveform. But if you compare this, you can see there's not a lot happening here, and then there's a bit more happening around here and we compare it to what it actually looks like on the screen you can kind of see that it's you know it's um, it's getting more busy around here which starts around there so yeah and the way to select the first and end part of the loop is to uh, tap 
quickly like that to uh, get the first one and tap longer like that to get the second one and you can see it's done it like that. I'll show you when I tap long. There you go, that's the second point. And tap short. Okay. Let's just put it back around there. Yep. So now I've got that. Now here we have our keyboard layout. Up here we have velocity. Uh, and you can do this all multi-touch, so you're able to actually play the notes and um, adjust the velocity while you're going. So it's a bit like playing. It's a bit closer to playing to, to playing like a keyboard. Um, so here we have three octaves. The red one's the lower octave. The green one's the middle octave, and the I think that's orange. Yeah, orange is the higher octave. So let's try it. Luckily, that's working. Let's go back here and turn the looping on. Okay, it's a bit difficult to turn the looping on. On. Okay. There you go. Okay, now let's see if I can make a chord. A very successful demo actually. <laughs> okay, we can also turn on pitch detection if which is very useful for when you're playing with um other musicians, but um it's not so much useful now because I mean there's nothing to compare it to unless you're playing with a backing track, etc. Um the, th the one thing about the pitch detection here though it is a bit erratic and it does change every five minutes. Um depending on the different timbre and depending if you've played more than one note in the selected loop, but I'm going to try it anyway. So I'll just show you what pitch it's playing at the moment. Okay, that's that one. And turn it on. So immediately it's a lot higher. This is that. This should be the actual pitch. See, it's changing. <laughs> well, if you want to get that sort of effect, be my guess. Oh, cool. All right, so we have a stock note now as you can hear, which is a good uh, time for me to show you the MIDI panic button. Well, it's not really MIDI. But we go onto the second page and click the panic button. There we go. I thought it wasn't going to work then. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. 